President-elect Martelly, welcome to CSIS. Coming into office, you have very little time to confront uh, some very serious challenges and also some opportunities that are coming your way with uh, donors and, and also new initiatives that uh, people in, in Haiti are ready for. What do you consider your top three priorities coming into office? First of all, thank you, Steve, for having me, and I'm going to thank uh, the members of CSIS. And uh, I will tell you that uh, we're being caught by surprise. Uh, at first, we had, we had identified uh, the cholera issue as a priority, as an urgency. We had, prior, we had identified uh, the relocation of the people under the tent as uh, a priority. And things are changing. Now, uh, the, the price of the fuel is going up. So we have to get ready for a, a crisis on, on in crise alimentaire, a food crisis, uh, as, as the price of uh, the products are going high on the, in the international market. Price of oil is going up. And uh, it's like uh, things ch are changing on us. So we are planning on, we are actually talking to uh, our importators. Uh, we are working uh, on, on cutting the tax that we perceive on these products. And uh, the cholera remains uh, an issue because if, if, it's, if we don't focus on it, then it will spread again. And uh, as another issue, we have, we have the, uh, the people living under those tents. It's been over 14 months, and they are still living under the tents. And not much is being done. And I believe uh, if a little bit was done, we would have seen progress, because some of, some of these tents are fake tents. People, people are using these tents to make business. Uh, they, they, they come when there is food distribution. They come when they're about to promise a land to, to, to a tent owner. And whenever the organizations in charge of that leaves, they leave too. But way before the earthquake, lodging, housing was an issue. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to be one of our priorities. Education is another priority for us, as we have identified ignorance as a victor who, who produces, who generates uh, uh, poverty. So it will be very important for us to bring to finally bring our kids uh, to school, the the, the constitution uh, predicts or mandates uh, free schooling, but unfortunately, uh, our past leaders have never tried to uh, implement. So I think it's a responsibility that I have, as I understand the need for every child to go to school, and the last one will be the the agriculture reform that we need to do. We'll be creating wealth, we'll be bringing a f food security, we'll be stopping that migration toward uh, the big cities, we'll be opening a, a window on, on and decreasing importation. So these are the aspects that have been, uh, the, the theme that I've been camping, campaigning on, uh, but we must we must remember that everything else remains a priority in Haiti, starting from clean water, security, land title, uh, and so on, the state of law, uh, transparency, uh, eradicating corruption. Uh, these are issues that we must address as we need, we understand the need to rebuild that confidence, to to build a co that confidence back between the people of Haiti and the government itself, and confidence between uh, Haiti and its partners. It's very important to do that. Even rebuilding that confidence should be a priority. Well, that's a lot of responsibility to rest on your shoulders, as well as the shoulders of the members of your administration. Um, but at the same time, you have quite a bit of talent in the Haitian people. What strengths do you think the people of Haiti bring to this task of moving forward? Well, I think this is the greatest opportunity that we have because the people of Haiti are directly implicated this time. They have voted in mass because they, they wanted a rupture, a rupture with a, a state or a traditional 
politics that have shown no results. And because of that, they, uh, now they feel like they have, they have fought that fight, they have won, they have uh, overthrown a system who is a failed system, and now they're already taking to the streets and cleaning the streets. They're waiting for, for uh, orders. You know, they want to implicate themselves. They're willing to suffer. They're willing to move out of tents. They're willing to move out of neighborhoods. They understand that uh, most of the decisions we will have to take are not going to be uh, popular measures. And they're willing to suffer because they, they identify in this uh, new leader that I am a, a light at the end of the tunnel. And because of that, uh, I believe uh, it's, they're going to play a very important role. And uh, I have campaigning telling them that I, I was going to count on them as much as they do count on me. And together and with our partners, with the international community, uh, behind one dream, all, this, all this, this weight that you have identified on my shoulder, it will remain a weight, but it will be uh, easier to, for us to succeed. Mr. President-elect, thank you so much for visiting us this afternoon at CSIS. Thank you so much, and uh, no need to tell you that I'll be, I'll, be, I'll be expecting CSIS expertise also for us to succeed. Thank you. My pleasure.